If I never see my name in lights If they don't cheer me, that's all right If they never consider me great And for fame and fortune, I must wait Lord, I'm happy just to know I'm in your will Lord, I'm happy just to know If the president never calls And I'm not invited to the White House balls If I never have power the land And if wealth never, never hits my hands I want you to know Happy, happy, happy to know I'm, I'm in your will Lord, I'm happy just just to know I'm in your will I'm in your will Oh, I'm in your will Oh, yes In your will That's all I want I want to be Any of the old white house balls 
and favor to you this day on this Sunday morning. What an exciting day this is. I believe with all of my heart, God's going to do something significant for you. Let me welcome you, our East Sanctuary. That's right, our Cyber Church who are tuned in today as you do each and every Sunday. Let me appreciate you uh, for your consistent support uh, in watching this worship experience. Listen, I'm going to ask you to do a few things for me today. Of course, I want you to hit the share button and tag, text, tweet as many people as you can. But I want you to be more interactive. I want you to engage us even more this day and every day after this. I want you to make sure you're sending hearts, that you're sending thumbs up, that you are commenting. Uh, that is very, very significant. Uh, I want to keep our connection really, really tight. So as you are receiving the word or enjoying every aspect of this service, I want you to interact. Again, put the hearts up there. Let us know you're enjoying. Put the thumbs up. Let us know that we're doing a great job and you're enjoying watching. Again, today is going to be be incredible. I can sense it already. Listen, today's message, I believe, is going to be a life changer for you because uh, like you, there is nothing that I detest more uh, than when someone tries to play you um, as if you're dumb, as if you're so naive that you have no clue as to what they are doing. But what the enemy doesn't realize is that for people like you and I who have the spirit of God on us, we have mastered something that we're gonna talk about today that most people have not mastered that yet, is that you have to master being smart enough to play dumb. Got it, got you, didn't it? Hang on, hang on a little while with us. And we're getting ready to go into our praise and worship and experience the very throne room of God. And immediately after that, I'm going to be right back here with the word of God for you. Don't go anywhere. Oh, what are you turn? into wine you open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you mm, there's none like you oh into the darkness you shine and out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, oh God, there's none like you, come on, you sing it with me, oh, our God is greater, and our God is stronger, Lord, you are high. God, you are here. 
Shalom. He's Jehovah's sit canoe. He will cover you. He will fight for you. You don't have to face it alone because if he's with you, nothing can stand against you. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus. Yes, I am. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. Not cancer. Not diabetes, not high blood pressure, it won't stand against, yeah. Cause our God is greater, our God is stronger, he's higher than any other. Oh, oh, oh. oh our God is a healer, oh, our God is a healer, he's a healer, and he's our God. He's our God, yes. He's our God. He's my God and he's your God. Yes, he's our God. He's the Lord of all. He's the Lord of all. The Lord is great. Matthew chapter 9. And I want to read verses 27 through 31. Here the beginning of the reading of the word of God. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yes, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know. Shh. Don't run your mouth about this. But they, when they left Jesus and departed, they start running their mouths everywhere. Spread abroad his fame in all of that country can you shout amen? amen I want to preach for a few moments from the subject this is not how I saw it playing out would you just look at somebody and say this is not how I saw it playing out
I would open, ladies and gentlemen, by pointing out to you that there is quite a grave and very stark difference between sight and vision. Sight is limiting while vision is limitless. Sight is limited by distance, darkness, and deterioration of circumstance, while vision explores, expects, and expands. I, I know you have sight, but if you're going to get what God has for you in this season of your life, then you're going to have to tap into the very valid vision that God is showing you. Let me drop this on you. Just because nobody else sees it does not invalidate the fact that what I see on the inside is more real than what I see on the outside at any given moment. Oh my God, there, there, there's somebody in here. You've been sitting, and ladies and gentlemen, sight is, is what is apparent. Sight is limited to availability while vision sees opportunity no matter what is looking at. Oh my, uh, when, when you got vision, it doesn't matter that it looks to be an awful condition or circumstance. When you got vision, you learn how to look look past that and say if you give me that I can turn it in as a might I tell you somebody could take the hand you've been dealt and win really big with it right now while your your sight is saying this is bad this is horrible if you got the right vision you could get in anywhere and make it happen ladies and gentlemen sight is limited to what is obvious while vision is always fascinated with what's in the distance and what is yet to come and what has already been slated and scheduled for an arrival for you. I don't know who I'm preaching to early, but I want to tell you, get ready. Something is getting ready to arrive to your home. Something is getting ready to show up that you're going to take custody of. Something that I don't know what it is. I don't know how big it is. I don't know the size of it. But all I can tell you is that get ready for the arrival of it. It doesn't look a parent to anybody else around you in fact they think you're crazy because you're shouting and dancing and you see nothing tangible I don't shout when I see it's tangible I shout till it be oh my god I need about 30 of you to give God the kind of shout that shows God I can drop this on you I can trust you with that amount I can do it but you gotta have vision Ladies and gentlemen, vision is external, sight is external while vision entertains an internal reality. Vision is when you're consumed with what's coming. Sight says I have no more expectation because of what has been and what I've ever experienced. But I want to show you today that even when you have no sight, you got to retain your vision. Oh, my God. Oh, there's somebody in here now. I want to talk to you today and tell you, you got to have vision in you. You got to speak it. You got to live it. You got to talk it. You got, In fact, you got to learn how to be discriminate and discriminate. I can't just run with people that are not talking about vision. I've got to be entertaining people whose language is focused forward. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the unfortunate experience of meeting these two blind men in our text this morning. And it's interesting because the book says that these two men are following after Jesus. Now, I want to talk to you and I want you to understand that you can be following Jesus and not know where you're going. You can be following Jesus and not know where you're going. I thought you were following Jesus. I am. Where you're going? I don't know. But what I need you to understand, that if you know who you are following, 
going. It doesn't matter where you are going. You just follow. Oh my God, I feel something breaking out of here. You just follow the God of your salvation and your spirit tells you no matter where I end up, it's going to be better than where I started out. I need you to give him praise right now if you believe that if you would follow God and trust him when you can trace him and follow him when it doesn't look obvious to you, you're going to end up somewhere far better. Ladies and gentlemen, these two blind men are following Jesus. Now, it's interesting because the Bible lets us know that they were not born blind, but that somewhere between their birth and adulthood, they had lost their sight. Now, that's not unlike mo most of us in this room today. The reality of the matter is you know what it is to lose sight on some stuff that uh, you lost sight on what's important you've lost sight over what you should be doing at this stage and this you've lost sight over what's really important from the things that are too trivial for you to even be giving your attention to at this season but the Lord said to tell you that while you're praising me today I'm getting ready to restore your vision again I'm getting ready to give you some enthusiasm in your spirit Spirit. The devil told you, look at you, you messed up so bad, you can't see nothing anymore. God don't even look like he around you anymore. But that devil is a liar. The Lord sent me to jumpstart you today and say, if you can believe that I am still on your side and I brought you too far to leave you where you are right now, you got to praise God for the vision that he's given you. And here's the kicker. You don't need anybody else's support to believe the vision. If I gave you you the vision I'm gonna give you the provision and it, oh my god I need you to praise God all over this house today if you believe your vision is still gonna happen ladies and gentlemen they they had lost their sight I don't know if they lost it abruptly I, I don't know if they lost it gradually but what we do know is that they had lost their sight and two blind men are following Jesus now you might find that interesting but brother Henry what I found even more interesting is how did two blind men find each other in the first place uh, these two blind men are following Jesus but how did y'all hook up anyway? Or oh, how, how did y'all hook up anyway? Because I want you to understand that one of the things the enemy will use to deceive you and to derail you from your purpose is to connect you with dysfunctional partnerships. You are codependent on the people you're connected to only because the, uh, your, the connection is based on what you both cannot do. Y'all missed that. I saw when it got right by you. Now, why are you connected with people who cannot do what you cannot do? If I can do this, I got to have somebody around me that knows how to compensate for the deficiency in my life. And the reason you are experiencing defeat is you keep welcoming people in your life who are no better than you are. They can see no further. They cannot add to your life. I'm blind. You blind where we go how did they find each other anyway ladies and gentlemen I want you to understand that the, you must be careful that you're not associating with people based on your mutual deficits mm, uh, uh, God based on your mutual dysfunction function who's gonna inspire you if you're blind and I'm blind how we gonna get anywhere if you broke and I'm broke what we gonna do if you sad and I'm sad how we gonna benefit each other you gotta be careful because the enemy will always try to destroy your vision by creating division between the folk that are closest to you that's why oh my god that's why I made up my mind this year I'm holding auditions for my life now I ain't just letting you in my life because you smile good and you got a good rap but devil is and I, I sit down let me interview you this year these blind men have a codependency based on what neither one of them can do 
and when you're blind, ladies and gentlemen, it is not just an issue. It's not an issue of lack of movement. When you are blind, it's an issue of a lack of direction. It, the blind men are still moving, but they have no sense of direction. There, there are some of you in this room who've been faced with a lot of challenges already, and it hasn't stopped you from moving, but you're not sure as to where you're going. Oh my God. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to be careful that you are not allowing dysfunctional relationships around you to keep you from operating in the directives and the direction that God has ordained for your life. Oh my God. Let me, I don't know if I could preach this, but I want to tell you stop apologizing to people for your need for advancement. Mm. Stop. Oh my God. Stop working about so many people's feelings because they're going to get mad because you want more than you have now. If you're going to get mad because I want more than I want now and it's just February, you might want to check me out in March because I'm going all in. Oh my God. I need somebody that's around me that can see me having more than I'm having now. Not only do these blind men have a lack of direction, but ladies and gentlemen, they, they are not afforded the benefit of discretion. In other words, everybody knows they're blind. They can't hide the fact that they're blind because if, if somebody didn't grab their hand, they're bumping into stuff. And, 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 and then God says, what I will do is I will not give you the benefit of discretion sometimes because I need them to see you where you are so that when I raise you up, it will be absolutely no confusion as to how you got out of what you were in. It's past the point of the doctor. It's beyond the scope of the psychology everybody's going to know if he got out of that it had to have been the hand of the Lord I don't know if I can handle this or not but I want to tell you there are about 40 of you that's getting ready to make a mass exit from a season that swore it would never let you go oh who am I preaching to in this room today I want you to shout like it's going out of style because you made up in your mind in this season I refuse to sit here in a stagnant I'm going to another dimension. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hear this. Hear this. Tamika, you're going to like this. Uh, they had no sight, but they did have a strategy. Uh, they had no sight, but they have a strategy. What's the strategy, Bishop? I'm glad you want to know. The strategy was, come, come here, come here. Let's do whatever it takes to get the attention of Jesus to see us because we can't see him. Hold on, hold on. Don't shout yet. Because, see, I used to come to church and I used to tell people, well, I don't come to church to be seen. Let me revamp that and tell you, starting today, I'm coming to church to be seen. I'm not coming here to be seen by you. Oh, don't get it twisted. I don't care what your assessment of me is. I'm not coming to model and style and profile, but my strategy is since I cannot see as far as I want to be seen, I cannot see the depth of my life when I get to church. I want him to see me. I need somebody to praise him right now. If you want God to see you right about now, and when he sees you, he's going to do something about your situation. Some of y'all are a little too quiet. God ain't going to see you like that. I need you to wave and say, God, here I am. Here, here I am right now. If you need somebody to drop a few million or here I am. If you need somebody to heal, here I am right now. They have no sight, but they got a strategy. <laughs> I'm coming to be seen. This is why you can't let folk who don't want what you want from God shut you up in church. 
it's always those people who get aggravated with you because you are believing God for what you're believing God for and they talk about girl look at her she up there making all that and all well if you could heal my body I'd shut up if you could pay all my bills I'll sit there like a bump on the law but since you can't do none of that yeah I'm right here waiting for the Lord Ladies and gentlemen, you must watch these two blind men because first they teach us that if you're going to really get a miracle from God, here's what you have to learn how to do. you got to learn how to put your desperation on display. Y'all missed a good place to shout there. They, 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 these two blind men, the Bible says that they are, they are crying and saying, Jesus Thou son of David, have mercy upon us. Now the problem with the folk in the church, not you, but the folk that are at the parade today, uh, but, but the problem with most folk in church is that they are crying behind Jesus, but the Bible says if you're going to cry, you must cry and say something. That got right by it. The book says that they were crying and saying, oh my God, see when you have nothing to lose anyway, this is the problem with the church. Sometimes we are so reserved because we are attempting to preserve our own image. That got right by. I don't want them to know what I'm going through. I want them to think everything is well with me. I want to just come in. I don't want them to know my bills are behind too much. I don't want them to know that I'm struggling relationally right now. But you can't just come in here crying. You gotta, if you're going to cry, then you got to say something. You got to wipe your eyes long enough and say, devil, yes, it hurt, but I don't have no plans on being a hurt, broken individual the rest of my life. You got to cry and say something. Trying to hold on to the preservation of me is delaying the restoration of me. Oh my God. Most people are following behind you. They're crying every week. God help me out. God do this. God I need you to do this. And you're just crying. But you should never be crying without saying something. I want to talk to you and tell you that you might be crying. But you got to prophesy a different narrative at the same time. That got right by you now. Because see, if you're not careful, the enemy will let you get all in your feelings and your emotion. Look how bad it is and nobody loves me. But you got to be crying and say, weeping may endure for the night. But joy, I thought I had a church in here today that says joy is going to come in the morning. I might be down to what looks like my last dime right now. But my God shall supply all, of, not a part of it, not a fraction, not a piece of it. God is going to supply all you got to cry and say something. Look at your neighbor say, you ought to be saying something right about now. Oh my God, all the crying you did, all the complaining you, you got to cry and say something. But David, check this out. You could tell because that dialogue was on point and in sync. They said together in concert to Jesus, they said, Jesus have mercy on me. No, that's not what he said. It said, Jesus, have mercy on us. Get this, it's going to be worth your price, the gas money it took for you to get to church today. I want to tell you that one of the strategies how to get what you want from the Lord is to want the same thing for somebody else just as bad. Oh my God, I wish I had somebody in here that understand you can't be praying all these selfish prayers and it's all about me, the devil is a liar. You got to say it and want it as badly for somebody. I want you to check your role. Look down your role and say, do you need a healing? Lift your hand and say, Lord, heal us, heal us. Find somebody that needs a financial breakthrough and say, Lord, send us the money. Find somebody who's been struggling lately and say, God, give us an answer because if I could be selfless. Uh, said, have mercy on us. 
Ladies and gentlemen, they recognized Jesus even though they, they could not see him. And the Bible says that because they're blind, they're following after Jesus. Now imagine how hard that's got to be. They're following after him, but they're crying and they're shouting to him. But the text says, Jesus says nothing to them. Sometimes faith is following him when he doesn't say a word. Sometimes real faith is following after God. When they told me to get loud with him, I'm getting loud, but he's not saying anything. They told me to get in God's face, but it doesn't look like God is saying anything at the moment. But I want you to understand, God is trying to test your faith because he wants to know, can you be insistent even though it looks like I'm ignoring you? Can you be as intense about your worship when it looks like I don't, I'm not even showing you any interest of the matter? And the Bible says... They're following him, but he's not saying anything. Can you walk when you don't have a word? <laughs> can, can you keep walking when he hasn't said anything yet? Now the Bible says that he lets them holler behind him, and then he gets into a house and the boys follow him into the house. Sister Rita, he has no invitation. He's never been there before. And they follow Jesus into a house they've never been in. Now, if you know anything at all about blindness, one of the worst things you can do to a blind person is to rearrange their furniture. Uh, when they get in the house, because if you're blind, you go in the house, you know, two steps, that's my table, I drop my keys off, four steps to the right, that's my kitchen right there. But Jesus gets them into a house they're unfamiliar with before he would even dialogue with them. Jesus gets them in the house and says to the boys, do you believe I'm able to do this? Now, that's a problem for a lot of church people now because God, I've been shouting. I've been screaming. God said that sounds good. But everybody shouts when they're in trouble and they need me to do something. That's not indicative of you believing me. It's you following me. Watch this and have to trust me when you lose control. Gets them into a house where they have no control. And says, now, do you believe me? And the men respond back to Jesus. They said, yes, Lord, we believe you. Because sometimes in order for God to give you your miracle, one of the prerequisites is he has to strategically disorient you. Sometimes your faith is not valid until God gets you in a place where you have no visual. Uh, that, that you don't know where you are I don't know where I am but I know you're here oh my god I don't know what's going to happen but I know you are here I don't know there's somebody in this room today let me prophesy over your life and tell you I don't care how long you've lost visual and lost sight on it I want to tell you that the Lord is about to come through for you and that the healing hand of your God is about to supply everything can I get you to give him praise right here for the blessing that's about to come it's about to happen even though you can't see how it's going to happen Jesus touches their eyes watch it but he doesn't touch their eyes until he gets a yes from them some of you are waiting for God to give you a yes but God says I'm waiting for you <laughs> To give me a yes. I'm, a, I'm waiting on you to say, God, I surrender. I submit my will to you. And he touches their eyes. And they get their sight. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I read to you the first verse. They didn't ask for sight. They asked for mercy. I 
want to tell you about a God who's about to give you some stuff you didn't even ask for yet. Oh my, I, I'm getting, do I have anybody here that says, God, I'm ready for some stuff because I don't even know I need it. God said, I'm going to give you some stuff you didn't even know you enjoy. You didn't even know you'd like to have a boat because you never thought of seeing yourself. I'm just getting ready to throw some stuff in there because you asked me for mercy, but I'm getting ready to give you a miracle. Somebody that needs a real miracle from the Lord, I need you to praise him right where you are. Jesus said, come here, fellas, before y'all go, I know you got your miracle, but I'm giving you a miracle with stipulation. What's the stipulation? Don't tell nobody <laughs> that I did this for you. See, I don't know if you grew up like I grew up. I, you know, I was always the favorite child, right? Uh, and uh, I would get what nobody else would get. That's, that's just how I would look. You know, we sit outside. Here, eat this. Wipe your mouth. Get all it off your mouth now. When you go inside, keep it. Don't tell nobody I got this for you now. Don't, don't you let nobody know. And, and, and so one day I made a mistake. We were eating this big sandwich. And I went in there and there was a piece of tomato on my shirt that I, that I had forgotten about. And they went in there and said, how come he got a sandwich? And I said, Dad, I, didn't, I never opened my mouth. But the reality of it is I never had to say a word. What I got was on me. Oh, my God. That somebody, I want to talk to you and tell you that God God's about to show you better than he can tell you. God's about to let your enemies see that they put their foot on the wrong one. They tried to alienate the wrong one. And the Lord's got a miracle with your name on it. Don't tell nobody. How are blind men supposed to act like they can see though, Jesus? He tells him not to tell anybody, but if you read your Bible, your Bible is very explicit. The Bible said they start running their mouth. Here's the reality. They got their miracle, and the next thing they did was disobeyed God. Wait a minute. This ain't a good first Sunday message. You messing me up because we was getting ready to shout and go in on that. But I want you to understand the reason you really should be praising God right now because there's some stuff God gave you that he didn't take back once you disobeyed him. The text said that they, they weren't like blind and got their sight and they disobeyed God and he took their sight back from They saw until they died. I want to do, I have about 40 y'all in here that oh God of praise said God you did what I asked you but I disobeyed you after I got it but you still gave it. You still let me keep it. You still kept my name good. You still had favor on my life. I need you to shout right about now and say God I thank you for the miracle. Everybody standing all over this room. I brought you here. I want you to understand. Jesus said that even though they disobeyed him, the mercy of God. Maybe I'm talking to the wrong people. Anybody ever disobeyed after you got what you wanted? Yeah, okay. You know how you, you were real submissive. God, please give. Ooh, if you give it to me, God, I'm going to walk up right. But there are a lot of stuff I got now that should have been long gone. But the Lord said to tell you, this is not the season for you to operate merely by your sight. Because if you look at what you're looking at, that's enough to shut you down spiritually, emotionally. It's enough to make you ditch your faith and doubt God on every angle. But the Lord told me to tell you this day, this is not going to play out like you thought it was. Because the enemy will tell look at you screaming and you yelling, you're shouting, and Jesus ain't saying that. Jesus could care less, looks like. But I'm trying to get you into a new environment. Watch this. He brought them in a house they've never been in. The Lord just prompted me. He says, tell them, I'm going to bless them in an undisclosed location. I'm going to bless you in places you never even thought you'd end up at. You're going to be looking. I've never been on the 57th floor of a building before. I've never, I never even knew it went this high. But the blessing of the Lord is on you. Lift your hand. I pronounce now the grace of God. Some of you are asking for mercy and God says, I'm about to add a miracle on top of your mercy request. 
I'm getting ready to illuminate dark areas, places you couldn't see. I'm getting ready to reignite vision within your spirit. I'm getting ready to cause you to see yourself where you know you could be in life. So Father, I thank you now for the blessing that's upon your people and there's nothing the devil can do about it. And I pronounce they are blessed all the days of their life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to give God the best praise you got all over this room. Oh, come on church. Come on, come on. Yeah, I know it don't look like it's going to play out, but God's going to play. It's going to play out the way God intended it to play out. I once was blind, but now I see. If you're in this room this morning, you need salvation. Come. I'm almost at the point of the Apostle Paul where I want to beg you. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. If you're in this room this morning, you say, Pastor, Honestly, everything's been looking like a blur. Looks like life's just been in a maze. My sight has been obstructed. My vision seems to have lost steam. But the Lord said, all you got to do is give me a yes. And I'm getting ready to touch you and restore the things that you thought were lost forever. If you're in this room, come on, come on, sweetheart. There's somebody else in this room. I dare y'all to praise him. I dare you to praise him and see the hand of God begin to move. Come on, there's somebody else. Come on. God's granting vision again. Please hear me. Don't sit there and be too prideful and say they don't know. No, no, forget about us. We don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. The Bible says they didn't get their miracle until they were settled with the fact sometimes you got to put your desperation on display. Say, God, I don't care how they look at me. I'm not just going to cry. I'm going to cry and say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Come on, if you're here, come on. This is a no judgment zone. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, come on, church. Come on, come on. Come on, I ain't leaving. Come on, sir. Come on. I ain't leaving the same way I came. I don't care. I'm a look. I don't care. I'll look in front of you. Come on, come on. They're still coming. I don't care. I, it ain't about my reputation. It ain't about looking cool. When I come to the house of God, I need transformation of life. Is there another one in this room today? Feels like God's ignoring you. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just trying to get you to another place. If you're here, come on, my brother, my sister. You might be watching from around the world, wherever you are, this same anointing. It's coming right through this screen. You're receiving the salvation of the Lord, whatever zip code, area code you live in. God is not limited by location. God is a spirit. Those that worship him have to worship him in spirit and truth. If you're here, come on, I'm waiting on you. Is there somebody else? Hallelujah. That's what he wants, a yes. Come on. Tell him yes in your spirit. I'm not perfect, but I'm giving you my yes. I've messed up more times than I can count, but I'm giving you my yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the point in our service where, where I like to call our global giving experience. That's right, because people just like you, literally around the world, different cities, states, zip codes, area codes, are tuned in just like you, and they send seed from around the country because this is the place they're being fed. This is the place that they're getting relevant revelation uh, that helps shape how they move, how they behave, how they walk in their life. And on this day, uh, I'm gonna ask you to do something that I've asked those who are uh, part of our in-person audience. I'm gonna ask my cyber church members on this day, I want, every one of you that can and will that feel the spirit of the lord that just feel so led of god i want you to get a 70 dollars seed prepared and i want you to intentionally put it in the kingdom of god 
I want you to do it now, no delay. This seed, it, it's, it's an urgency, the seed that must hit the ground, the soul of the kingdom of God. And the Holy Spirit said, son, the moment it hits the ground, they're getting ready to be reaping great return off of it. So all of my cyber church, I need you to join me on this Sunday. If you're a part, if you feel connected, even if you're a new partner, even if it's your first day tuning in, but you sense a witness in your spirit that today I am connecting um, with this ministry. I want you to rush that $70 seed uh, into the ground. The giving means are right here at the bottom of the screen. We have multiple ways for you to give. Find the one uh, that's the most convenient for you. And I want you to give by faith. If you want to mail your seed, and of course, um, we have an option for that as well. You can literally uh, mail it to the address right here at the bottom of the screen. Get a stamp, a money order, cashier's check. Put it in there. We're going to pray over it and pronounce God's blessings over the seed that you are sowing on this day. I want you to rush it. This is an urgent seed. You have no time to delay. Don't let the enemy distract you and say, no, don't give this, don't do it. I promise you, that if you sow the seed, heaven is obligated to release the harvest in your life. Give now. Watch how God shows up. Hey family, didn't you enjoy the Lord on today? The service was just amazing. And I know the word was especially designed for you. I know Bishop Bowler has already challenged us to give, but let's not forget to sow into the man of God's life. Bishop Hillary Bowler has been delivering a powerful word of encouragement to uplift us every week. So let's sow into his life. You can do so by going to his cash app at dollar sign Henry W. Bowler 3. Yeah, that's right. Dollar sign Henry W. Bowler 3. Or you can also go to his personal website at henrybowler.com. So go ahead and sow a good seed into the man of God's life. God bless you. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this worship experience today as much as we all have enjoyed um, releasing it to you. Listen, today has been a spectacular day of God's power, God's presence. I'll let you in on a little secret that I don't tell a lot of people. The reality of it is sometimes I play dumb. Sometimes you got to play dumb because your survival depends on it. Sometimes you got to play dumb because you need to know who who's around you, who's really supporting you, who really has your back. And I want you to understand that as you have received this word in your heart and your spirit, you're getting ready to see life-changing results like you never have before. The truth is, sometimes I play dumb, but our God is all-wise and he's all-knowing. And no weapon that's formed against you is ever going to be able to prosper. You are already the victor. Listen, don't forget, make sure you share this with as many people as you can. Tell them if they missed it, come back, check out the replay. Again, don't forget, make sure uh, you go to all of our uh, social media platforms. If you have not subscribed or liked uh, or joined any of our pages, make sure you do that. Also, don't forget to go to my website, henrybolden.com. Make sure you sign up for my e-newsletter. Tells you all the things that are going on, all the upcoming things that we have going on. And uh, I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. There is a blessing in connection. No question about it. Well, I hate to leave you, but I have to go. Um, always, as, always remember, as I say in parting, that things can change for you at any moment. I'll see you next week.